YouTube, today a brand new team inspired by Sage and Park. Today we're going to be trying out a GMAX Center Scorch team and this team is inspired by Sage and Park's old rank 1 team featuring GMAX Center Scorch. I have a few adjustments for a restricted format. We'll see how they work. But if you do want to try out the team, you do have two weeks to grab it with this code here before it expires and a pacement available in the description down below. But otherwise, if you do enjoy the videos, be sure to leave a like down below, leave a comment down below and let's see how GMAX Center Scorch does. Hey, are y'all subscribed to the channel? About 50% of you who watch my videos aren't subscribed to the channel. If you would like to see more cool teams this month, make sure you do so. Thank you. All right, Kallax, Shadow Rider, the Thunderous, Whimsicott, Indy D with the Amoongus and Reggie Eleki. So this is a bit interesting. I kind of like Center Scorch here, but the problem is that Thunderous is a little bit concerning right here. I kind of want to go to Grim right here. Mamoswine's fantastic in this. Why does Mamoswine actually do a lot of work against this team? Yeah. It just does <laughs> it really just does i don't think i mind going with like the mammal swine and i think uh i think grimstall mammal swine is just really strong because the only way they can really knock me out i guess is i don't know it's the calyx really the thunders shouldn't be able to pick up a knockout onto me and with the grimstall i should be able to protect myself and then palky and center scorch in the back i kind of want to like if they lead Thunderous, which is generally really good against my team, that's why I'm thinking, oh, I can go for the Mammal Swine here, get rid of potentially the biggest damage dealer to my team, which is going to be that Thunderous, and then I free up my Center Scourge for a really strong win, I think, in the late game. And let's see here, because this is really going to depend. The matchup isn't exactly perfect. I will see what they decide to lead here. They could definitely lead like Amoongus Thunderous, which I think is definitely a possibility, or Whimsicott Thunderous, which is also a strong option here. Okay. Don't mind that. I do have the Choice Scarf on the Mammal Swine. Wonder if they Tailwind right away or they're going to go on the offense. But yeah, I am going to go for the Reflect here. And just go for a Crash here. They don't have good switches into my Mammal Swine. So I'd imagine Reflect covers the Tailwind as well as like uh, if Thunder survives, which it probably does here. If they Dynamax, which I'm assuming they are going to. I'm assuming this is Defiant Thunderous because they have a Prankster Whimsicott and way too many support Pokemon if this is uh, not Defiant Thunderous. So, yeah, I'm just going to go for the crash into the Thunderous. If they switch out, that's fine. I get some pretty heavy damage on whatever comes in. And usually, it'll probably be a passive Pokemon. I do Eleki's not a great here. The uh, NDD doesn't really do too much to me right now at the moment. And Amoongus just uh, Omega Low. So, <laughs> let's see here. There is a Dynamax here from the Thunderous. No surprise here. I really wonder if they Dynamax, if they Tailwind or not. I mean, it's fine regardless, because as long as I get the crash damage into the, uh, on the Thunderous, I think it's really solid here. Now, I'm kind of, actually, maybe there is one play that I'm uh, missing, and that's Switcher Rejects button. I think it's rare because of the NDD they have on their team, but I guess that could be an option. Are you kidding me? It is actually the Switcher Roo. That's dumb. <laughs> okay. Well, Wim's guy got a Choice Scarf. At least I didn't Dynamax Mammal Swine. <laughs> At least I didn't Dynamax Mammal Swine. Uh, here comes Airstream into my Grim Snarl. Oh, what? Wow. Why? I'm very shocked about that. Okay, here comes a crash into the Thunderous. I mean, that works out really well for me. I don't know why they did that, but... I am not complaining. Okay, I'll light screen up here and I am going to go for the Ice Shard into the Thunderous because I do want Chip on the Thunderous. No. Is Wim's got locked into Trick here? I think it is locked into Trick if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about that, but I am going to Ice Shard the Thunderous here because I do want the damage in the Thunderous. Might pick up the Knockout. It looks really close. I'd say I miss it probably. But if I do get the Knockout, it's absolutely huge for me. So I'll take it. So here comes an Ice Shard in the Thunderous. Yeah, I barely missed the Knockout. That's okay. Uh, the Whimscott stays in. Oh, is it tricking my Grimmsnarl? I already got screens up, so I think I'm good here. No, it is locking stuff into Moonblast. Okay. So, Choice Scarf, Whimscott, not really that much of a problem. It's not going to KO my Grimmsnarl here, and they probably go for the Mammoth Swine. Yep, Knuckle. Okay, that's fine. So, yeah. That just O-Code because they crit me? Oh, yeah, Reflect is up. So, yeah, they had to crit me. Okay, that's fine. That is fine. Okay. I want to go Palkia here because I think Santa Scorch under screens just wins against the team. 
So I think I do go Palkia here, and I think I just double up the Thunder slot with a. That's a really unfortunate crit though, because I had the potential of like getting Ice Shard in, uh, in case, because like I could sack Grim, protect Palkia, and then Ice Shard the Thunder the next turn. So that's actually a really unfortunate crit. Yet I do think this is still very winnable right here. So. We're going to go for the double up into the uh, Thunder slot with the Spirit Break plus the Spatial Rend. If they go for the KO on the Palkia, that's fine. If they take the Knockout on Grim, that's okay too. Uh, Airstream into Palkia and the Moonblast into Grim makes a lot of sense here for the damage. But I think Sound of Scorch can just pick up the win here. Uh, we'll see here though. As long as I have Pokemon surviving, I think it's a pretty huge situation. Uh, though not having Sacks might be a thing in the late game. Moonblast is going to come out into the Palkia. Okay, that's fine. As I take it with the screens, special attack drop, very unfortunate, but that's only going to matter if I, yeah, if like Palkia survives the turn, which I'd imagine they double up Palkia, which is fine. Okay. I could have protected Palkia, but if they took the knock on Grim, I can't let Thunderous really around here. Actually, could I? I probably could have, right? Because this is the last turn of Dynamax. I guess I could have theoretically because then they would be what? Well, if they Moonblast Wall Charge Palkia and then I have zero only Sound of Scorch remaining. I'm a little bit suspicious on that, how that would interact. So yeah, uh, let's go out and Sound of Scorch right here. What's nice is that they set up the Elijah Terrain. If they have Amoongus in the back, it actually is pretty huge, but otherwise it shouldn't matter too much. Uh, let's see who they bring out as the last uh, Calyx coming out. Yep, that's fine. As we do bring out the Santa Scorch right here, we might as well go for the KO into the Whimsicott. Did I go for the KO into Whimsicott? I think I do. I mean, Grimmsnarl can't really do much. I already have the screens up, right? Yeah, I have both screens up. Fake Tears doesn't change anything. Maxing doesn't change anything. I guess I go for the Whimsicott slot. I know Whimsicott can't protect, so I do want to target into that slot. Oh, they have Elekie in the back. That's why they decide to go for it. Okay. Uh, that makes more sense. I think I just go for the Inferno into the Calyx, actually. Yeah, I think Inferno and the Calyx is just fine. Let's see here, because uh, they did set up the Electric Terrain. I do have Light Screen up with the Assault Vest plus the Gigantamax, so I should be okay. Moonblast from Whimsicott really does not change the outcome of this game. I guess the chip technically does, but I mean, I think I should be fine against the Elegy. Let's see. We go for the G-Max Center Scorch right here. I also really considered going to Whimscott, but this is fine if I attack and then protect, I think. I, I'd imagine... Oh, they uh, take the KO on the Grimmsnarl. I guess it makes a single target, but what I thought was going to happen was they would try to get the uh, boost with the Grit. I guess they can't tell if they can get the boost or not, so it's a safer play to get or choose that target, yeah. I think I KO'd the Calyx from here, if I'm not mistaken. Here comes Inferno into the Calyx. Oh, I don't think I do, actually. Yeah, I don't think I do. I missed the knockout, I think, barely with the fire spin. A little bit unfortunate, but that's fine. Okay, I guess this could be a little bit tricky in the back. I'm going to go for a... I go for the knockout of Whimscott now. And then it's just going to come down to how good is the Santa Scorch versus the Alaki... Wait. Oh, they can switch out because they're not trapped in. Oh, Inity comes out. Huh. I completely forgot they weren't trapped in, so that makes sense. But it's not Eleki in the back, which is huge, I think. Hey, okay, Moonblast in the center scorch, that's fine. Here comes an Inferno. Which is gonna pick up the knock on the Whimsicott. Okay, perfect. They know about the fire spin, so I guess they have to go for Helping Hand Astral Barrage now. Yeah, they have to go for Helping Hand Astral Barrage. Or not Astro Barrage, Expanding Force. And I think that's probably their, like, one way out here. Because, like, if I go for Inferno into the Indity or attack the uh, Calyx's Dynamax, they know they lose, right? So, I think uh, they can't go for a Protect play and stall out my last turn Dynamax. They have to attack here. So, I might as well just go for the Max Bug into the Indity. Since uh, Expanding Force could be a little bit scary, I think, uh, from the Indity after the turn is off. So, yeah, this is Helping Hand Expanding Force. Come on, Santa Scorch. Please show me you're good. Please show me you're good. Here comes Expanding Force. Oh, oh, that wasn't even close. Why was I even worried? <laughs> Why was I even worried? Oh, so good. GMAX Santa Scorch. Here comes the Max Flutterby into the Indy. Able to pick up a knockout. And that is Santa Scorch right there. Okay, that's really cool. I took the damage way better than I thought. I thought after the Astro Barrage damage I saw, I was like, oh, 
wait, this could actually be problematic. But apparently it wasn't. I just go for the max bug there. And yeah, like they, they, they're forced to attack there. I know with the, with the Calyrex, because again, if I go for the Inferno, the fire spin activates. If I target into, cause they could follow me technically and protect, but because of the uh, fire spin, which I think is a really huge threat there. They had to force to go for the helping hand right there. And I guess maybe I didn't have to talk to Entity after all. I think it only mattered for, um, based on the damage, I thought it would have done more. I could have just like went for leech life and not worry. I think as long as I didn't get crit in the end game, I think I was okay there. So yeah, I guess technically I think Inferno was the better play, but I didn't realize how much the Ash expanding force did. And then there was also the chance for crit, right? So I think maybe, maybe Buggy is the better play. I'm not sure. But overall, was able to do a lot. Mammal Swine, really good opener. And then the Santa Scorch was able to clean up just as I hoped. If you currently enjoy the content you're watching and want to see more of it, make sure you check out my other YouTube channels, my second YouTube channel, my Eclipse channel. And of course, make sure you follow the action live on my Twitch channel. All links available in the description down below. All right, we got a Dragapult, the Zacian, the Blastoise, Incineroar, Reggie Aleki and Amoongus. So this looks pretty scary because of the fact that they do have the Zacian and Dragapult combination, which is not exactly a fun, fun matchup for me. I wonder, okay. So there's quite a few things that I do have to fear here. The Unders actually seems pretty good in this matchup, like uh, Specs Volts, which actually does pretty well against their team. So yeah, I do think I would consider that. Do I bring Real Boom in this matchup? Cause I'm not really that worried about the Blastoise. I really am not. I don't know if they're going to bring it though. That's the question. They could definitely opt for it. I could also just lead Mammal Swine. Mammal Swine kind of just can go on the offense right here. It's not bad against them. I bring Mammal Swine, Grim Snarl, uh, but I can't bring Santa Scorch if that's the case. I do want Santa Scorch, right? Because of the Assault Vest. Yeah, it does do pretty well. I do want Grim Snarl for sure. So I think Grim Snarl Palkia might still be the play here. I know I'm bringing Funders for sure. I think Funders is way too good. I think Santa Scorch in the back. I just want another backup to like uh, the Zacian. Now, I think a few questions that I had to ask myself is like, is the Amoongus max speed for like Airstream stuff with Dragapult combinations? That's also another thing. Because I think they're Dynamax and Dragapult and bringing in this matchup. Like, I don't think uh, if that Zacian's three attacks and not sub, this is going to be concerning. Zacian and Amoongus is not that bad for me. Okay. All right. So that's actually a really scary lead now that I think about it. Okay. I don't know if it's Sash though. That's the thing. Also, apparently... <laughs> okay, this could be a little bit concerning. I also don't know if that's sub or not. Okay, I think the... Oh, if I let the Santa Scorch here, it would be so good. Okay. We reflect here for sure. And I think just Protect. I want to Sack Palkia, actually. I mean, not Sack Palkia. Sack Grimmsnarl. They go for Protect with the Zacian, which is fine here. I wonder if they're just going to try to get Spore off into something like my Palkia or they might be targeting the Grim. If they target my Grim, this is really awkward. Okay, it is Spore into the Palkia. I feel like you make that play if you're Sash. I'm just not sure. I mean, I think I go Center Scorch here and... Are they going to Rage Powder or are they going to attack? Because if they attack with the Zacian, they are risking it to the Palkia, which is a thing that I could do here. I don't mind. Would I mind going for the Earth Power? I mean, I have pretty good answers to Zacian. It's just everything else that I'm a little bit worried about. I'm really worried about Dragapult too. I guess if I lose this Pokemon, it's really bad, huh? Uh, lead wasn't good for me. I'm just going to Spatial Rend the Amoongus here, I think, because I do need to, like, uh, I can't let my entire team get spored if I ignore it. So we'll bring out the Center Scorch here on Rage Powder. Okay, perfect. They're afraid of losing Zacian, which is really nice. The Human Blade is the best case scenario. Okay, really good. Really good. They were really scared of losing the issue on there, and I think that's fair. Okay. So, uh, Santa Scorch able to survive, eat that up. We are able to get a Spatial Rend off into the Amoongus. This should do some really nice chip damage. We also get to see how bulky it is. Yeah, that's really solid damage. Okay. Nice. And we can go for a... I guess we Fire Lash here, huh? I feel like Zacian should switch out. I think Amoongus should protect. I just don't know if it has protect. I mean, I think it would have protect. I want a Fire Lash and Spatial Rend as Aishion. So I know it sounds crazy, but I could see like Dragapult trying to come in. I could Spatial Rend hard read that, but I just don't think it's worth the hard read. You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna go, go for the gut here. Oh, they sub here. That's also fine. Is it? No, I would have preferred Spatial Rend in the Amoongus because it's going for Spore. I mean, that's 
not terrible. I'm able to get a decent, uh, no, that's pretty bad. Palkia taking, yeah. I made too much of an aggressive read here and it just didn't pay off. I do get a big hit into this Asian, at least with the Fire Lash, at least. Spore into Palkia, yeah. I think I'm going to have to hope for a turn one wake with Palkia pretty early. Because it's going to be important for Grim. I mean, I guess if I get rid of Zacian, it's not that bad. Because if I get rid of Zacian pretty early, then Grim can beat the Dragapult. Because like Dragapult doesn't have moves to touch it yet. I guess I could play around for that when Khan. Now it's a mind game of like protects and switches. I think I'm just going to target the Amoongasaw with Fire Lash. And I'm going to attempt to wake up with uh, Palkia once. It should be Sacred Sword, I think. Or protect or yeah, swap. Is this Dragapult? Yeah, makes sense. Okay. I'll get fast asleep. Okay, good. Uh, they gave me the Amoongus. That's really solid. All right. Goodbye, Amoongus. I'll take the Amoongus KO for sure here. Okay. Who is there? Okay, I think Dragapult has to be their max Pokemon. So what's in the back? Incineroar? Well, Zacian's coming in. Surprisingly, I'm actually not sure about this one. Okay, that's fine. I wonder if they're using this as a bait or not. Uh, I have Reflect Up, so Santa Scorch should live attacks. It might be to go for the Max Inferno here. I think Max Inferno's a play here in the Zacian. And I have no idea if Palkia is waking up. I think we just go for Spatial Rend. I don't think we can risk that. I don't know what they're going to do with the Dragapult, whether it's Airstream here or not. I think I just go for the attack in the Zacian and eliminate it. I should live the attack from their Dragapult with the with the Reflect Up. Unless they double Center Scorch, which would be awkward, I guess. That could be a thing. If Palkia wakes up, though, they're in a terrible position if they do that. So I guess it wouldn't be all that bad. We'll find out, though. They also can't go for like a Max Phantasm double up uh, with the defense drop, at least because of White Smoke. So their Dragapult does Dynamax. I got to stall it out because Grim Snarl is actually going to have to be my offensive Mon against it. And then it's going to come down to the last Pokemon. I'm thinking it's Incineroar, which means Thunderous can maybe deal with it. Uh, with the right place. Let's see here. Santa Scorch G-Max here, though. I've taken a lot of chip. A lot more than I probably thought. It is Airstream. Okay. Behemoth Blade's going to be super close, I feel like. I'm not sure if I'll load the Behemoth Blade. I'm hoping I do. Oh, they... Wait. This has to be in the center squish, right? It doesn't make sense they targeted the... Oh, they targeted the Palkia. Oh, they, they expected the Max Dragon raid. Yeah, I thought about the Grim, but Grim's just such a win con against the Pult. I do take this turns of sleep here. We do see the Max Inferno coming out. Okay. Got rid of Zacian. Huge. If it's Alaki back, though, I'm a little bit concerned. I know I do have Thunder still, I guess. Okay. Pretty okay here. Not too bad. Okay, let's see. If it's Alaki back, I know what I do. If it's Incineroar, yeah, it's Incineroar. Okay, perfect. Ooh. Dealing with this was a lot tougher than I was hoping for, but yeah, this works out. I'm going to protect Palkia and uh, Sack Center Scorch here. Fire Spin works on fire types, which is nice. I could back strike here, the Incineroar as well. That's not a bad play, but I mean... I don't see what it accomplishes. I could just go for Bug too. Bug isn't a bad play because it's the most damage in Incineroar and I do have to weaken it. I'll protect here or attempt to protect. Eh, okay. I think they have to target into that slot anyway, yeah. Because if they don't target into Palkia and it wakes up, it's really bad. I mean, I could have seen Fake Out into Palkia. They had Fake Out as an option. So I'm a little bit surprised they didn't go for it, but that works out well for me. Uh, here comes Flutterby into the Incineroar. Really solid damage there. Okay, perfect. And what's Incineroar going for? Flare Blitz. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, because I am able to survive that, which is really nice here. And okay, we might have had this. Center Squash might have just pulled up this game. Snow here or Thunderous? Definitely Thunderous. Because we reflect, I should live a max move. Yeah, I should live a max move. I guess. This is where having Thunder over Bolt Switch is really... Uh, thunder over Thunderbolt is really bad here. Because I, for, I keep forgetting to change the Thunders to Thunderbolt. Okay. 
I just go for Flutterby into Incineroar and I go for a Bolt Switch. This might be Max Phantasm double up. This could be Airstream. They go for Rowan. Interesting. In the Thunderous, it's not going to be able to pick up a knockout. No, I think that's a lose. I think it's a loss for them. The reason I think this is a lose for them is because uh, they didn't target my Center Scorch. They didn't go for Airstream. So my Center Scorch is faster than the Incineroar, if I remember right. Oh, or I just pick up the knockout of a Bolt Switch. Wow, Thunderous. Okay, it wasn't a Salt Vest. And it wasn't Citrus. I wonder if it's Chukka. Okay. Go Grimmsnarl and that should be the game. Oh, that's beautiful. A little bit ugly though. I did play that pretty ugly, I think. I think the team does have to rely on quite a few risks though since some of the tools, Center Scorch is really frail. So you have to play really heavily around some of the things like this Dragapult right here. But thankfully, I think that max turn paid off though. And they went way too aggressive, I think, with the read onto the Grim. I think it definitely made sense though. I think I think the uh, Grim Snarl read definitely did make sense because uh, uh, switching to Max Dragon, for instance, you don't lose Palky. But I felt like Palky with the sleep turns is way too much of a, a liability. I felt like and Grim Snarl can beat the Dragapult. So if I get rid of the uh, Zacian, I do win the game. So, yeah. As they go for Dragon Darts to pick up the knockout on Santa Scorch. But Santa Scorch, you did well, my friend. You did so well. You did amazing here. And I will be able to pick up the knockout to drag up with the spirit break. Oh, I can't believe that. That was close. That was close. That was close. Wait, it was. Oh, wait, I know this player. Oh, it's Fiona. <laughs> I think like I did misplay the early turns though. I guess I should have spatial rendered the Amoongus. I because I thought they were just going to like switch out the Zacian in a drag pulled early on and uh, have Rage Powder Pressure. So I read way hard into that for no good reason. I, it would have just been better to prevent the Spore off, I think, because it would have made the game a lot harder, I think, for my opponents. So yeah, I, I don't really love that play now that I think about it. Although, I, it also, because we never found out if the Amoongus had Protect at all. So yeah, I, maybe I should have just went aggressive there. But luckily, I think the rest of the plays worked out, especially the Kaywindization, I think, was the absolutely big one right there. All right. Zacian, Landis Fan, the Thunderous, Grimmsnarl, Rotom Heat, and Gashon. This looks pretty tough. I like Thunder. I like Mammal Swine lead. You know what's crazy to me? I think this lead might shock, but I think it's Mammal Swine Center Scorch here. I do like Mammal Swine Center Scorch. The reason I like Mammal Swine Center Scorch is I think it's really powerful as a lead right here. I think it's just really good against my opponent because if they lead Zacian stuff, I'm able to go for the inferno and if not that's okay because i have mammal swine which is pretty good against the rest of the team palky is like a really good bring here the last pokemon i'm kind of curious about because i don't know if i'm bringing grimmsnarl or Rillaboom. i don't think i'm bringing funders in this matchup so it's between grimmsnarl and Rillaboom. uh grimmsnarl provides screens Rillaboom provides the fake out and a little bit of offense i think which is still pretty solid here now i don't know i think it's grim because if it's defiant thunderous it can be a bit tricky i don't know where the max is gonna be though i don't even know if it's actually should be defiant thunderous oh this could Defiant thunderous is a little bit trickier than i remember so oh wait this could go bad if i didn't get to reflect them immediately maybe i should have led something safer let's see if i'm right though zacian and thunderous how risky do i want to play turn one This is a complicated lead. <laughs> Very complicated. I did this to myself. I mean, this is probably my best lead here, I think. Uh, yeah, because I would probably... Or Mammal Swine Grimmsnarl would have worked here too, actually. I think I crash here and I go for the Inferno. I don't see what else I can really do here. I think I just got to risk it. They might not expect a Scarf on the Funders. They swap out the Funders, which is actually really good for me. Rotom comes out. Okay. I don't mind that at all. Because if they attack and lose the Zacian, I'll take it because A, it could have play rough, which is really threatening to me. B, I will. Yeah, I think this is just really good for me. Let's see here. So I bring out the Center Scorch right here against. What are they going to do here? Protect? They protect us fine. Or should be okay. Okay, they protect. Safe passive play. I think that makes a lot of sense. I had a lot of free damage with the fire spin as well as Icicle Crash. And I trapped in both of these Pokemon, which is really solid here. Unless the Rotom has Volt Switch. So here comes a Crash into the Rotom. Not bad damage. 
and uh, here comes the inferno and what's really nice about the sand of scorch is we with the fire spin you do trap in these pokemon which is really solid okay and you do the residual damage on both pokemon which is really good like we even do residual damage against the rotom heat unlike uh the wildfire so that's pretty cool do i risk palkia or do i risk grim snow because if i take a behemoth blade here it's not amazing but i do think it's my best go at i think it's go grim here and i think it's uh go for the inferno because then i can bring out mammal swine the following turn and they might overheat the mammal swine double up in case it's sash and uh that means the overheat's gonna go out into center scorch which is fine oh they have that too completely forgot about that well not everything could go according to the plan uh that's that's not too bad i think for me though i lose grim here so palky was technically better i could have considered the ally switch on rotom heat i completely forgot about it <laughs> or didn't think they would immediately go for it but yeah that does make sense uh the damage in the rotom really good and uh tricky now tricky tricky now Gotta go Palkia. I think I might lose Endgame Funders actually. It just seems terrible now. I might lose Endgame Funders now. I will protect my Palkia. And I think Max Strike here makes the most sense. And I'm going to target down the Zacian slot. Now you might be thinking, why the heck would he target the Zacian slot? Well, the reason is the Roto. I think I'm going to try to outspeed and not take as much damage as I potentially could. For the following turn coming up. They play rough into Palkia, so they do a play rough. Makes sense. Oh, they Thunderbolt. Okay, that's fine. So I am able to get a max strike off into the Zacian. So now it underspeeds my Palkia. It doesn't underspeed my Center Scorch. Hmm. I got to be careful because I need Mammal Swine in safely. I do need Mammal Swine in safely. I think I'm going for the Earth Power here into the Zacian. I don't know if they're going to ally switch this time around. They definitely can. I think I got to go for the Mammal Swine switch here. I think I just have to make a read at this point. This is really bad. That ally switch did hurt me a lot more. Yes, I could take a knockout to Zacian, uh, the Zacian last turn. But the thing is, if I knock out the Zacian, they get a free switch to Thunderous. And that's horrendous for me, I think. So now I got to hope that they don't ally switch here. I'm going to go out into my uh, Mammal Swine here and Earth Power the Zacian. And I'm hoping for no ally switch here. Okay, nice. So I'm able to eliminate the Zacian here. I don't think they're clicking overheat. They saw how low damage the Thunderbolt did. I don't think they're going to click that. Probably Thunderbolt and Apalk is my guess. Yep. That's fine. Okay. Wait, Fire Spin still activates if I switch out? I actually did not know that. Wait, that's actually kind of huge. It's actually kind of huge. Thunderous comes out. Okay. Oh, it depends on their last Pokemon. If it's Gashadon, I think I am okay-ish. I got it. Wait, wait, wait. I forgot to consider Ally Switch. They could Ally Switch here. I think they're going to Airstream Overheat. That's like my guess. Oh, but there's also like the mind game of do they double up the mouse so I'm thinking I'm Sash. Oh, protecting Palky was a throw, I think. Well, it's not a throw if they just airstream the Palky and overheat the mouse so And it's not a throw. Because I keep Palky around. <laughs> well, I switched around on heat is messing me up, man. Okay, big icicle crash. Not a KO. Yeah, I didn't expect it, but that's still really good damage. Airstream does come out in two. Palkia. Perfect. All right. And what's the Rotom going for? Overheat? If we miss Overheat, that's huge. Okay. They hit Overheat. Which is fine. I don't think I have enough... I don't think I have enough damage up against the Thunders. I spin knocks at the Rotom Heat. Yeah. Goodbye, Rotom. I go send a Scorch now. This is close. This is close, but I, I don't think this is it. Oh, it's Landers 2 in the back? Yeah, no shot. I, I need a Gashadon to win. I need Gashadon to win. 
Because if it was Gashon, I had a chance, I think. Unless the Landers Lee has no moves that can hit Center Scorch for some dumb reason. They're like, Earth Power, Sludge Bomb. I'm going to Hydro Pump here and uh, Fire Lash. Yeah, like, there's no chance I win. Airstream going to come out. No surprise into Palkia. Yeah. And then you just Rock Slide. Ooh, what went wrong? My lead, I thought, was really solid there because I felt like I could put on the pressure with the crash into the Inferno over overdrive right away. Actually, why did I call it Inferno Overdrive? It's just Inferno, right? Because Inferno Overdrive is the C move from Sun and Moon. So, trying to think about what went wrong. I think the Alex switch from him went wrong. I forgot. I completely forgot and I should have suspected it right because like they brought in the Rotom Heat like no problem and they were really like suspicious of like what I was trying to go for so yeah that was the biggest mistake then it kind of just snowballed I do think strike was the right play because I needed to get a position mouse wine in or I had no shot I think in order to win that game I had to read the ally switch or I had to crit the uh I had to crit the thunder with uh Crash. If I crit the funders to crash, uh, the game had there's a chance for the win, or I might just win. Yeah, I would just win at that point. So I did. I think I did go for the best outs after the ally switch, because if I took the knockdown to the Zacian and they play with my Palkia slot, that's not a free switch to Mammal Swine, and then uh, I just get air streamed and destroyed afterwards. So that is a bit of a problem here. Yeah, I didn't think they would play passive in that situation and it just ended up hurting me so much. I thought they were going to try to double something maybe and I would be able to be a good position, but well played on their part. But yeah, I do think the biggest mistake here was not suspecting the Rotom Heat coming in and not considering the ally switch because once they brought in the Rotom Heat, you had to assume something was like suspicious right there, I felt like. Because like, yes, it was a good pivot, but like... What do you accomplish afterward? And then, yeah, the ally switch, especially because, uh, you know, they'd be trapped in. So against the center scorch, so Rotom Heat into Zacian wouldn't be exactly that great, right? So uh, especially losing the Palky answer, that was pretty good. So, yeah, I think the ally switch could have at least been considered as an option. Maybe not predicted, but at least considered, which would have maybe think up twice about my moves. And that is the show. GMAX Center Scorch doing a lot of work, surprisingly. I thought this Pokemon was going to be really tough to use, and it is tough to use. Really weak to max airstreams and rock moves in general, which is always just really difficult for it. But it did do a lot of work in today's episode. I hope you did enjoy it, though. If you did enjoy the GMAX Center Scorch action, be sure to leave a like down below, leave a comment down below. It really does help me out. And make sure you try out the code with the team right here. Rental code available for two weeks. Grab it while you can. Pace been available in the description down below, but that's going to be it for me. Have a great day, people. And until we bow again, I'll catch y'all later.